<laughs> it's Weezy and Baby in the efforts for stunt though. <laughs> yeah, no lie, babe. <laughs> Fuck. I'm fucking bored. Ha! Welcome to another edition of the Board Ball Driving Podcast. The podcast that just won't quit, even though everyone says just fucking quit. I actually had a lot of fun today. Um, got to hang out with a buddy of mine, uh, Keyshawn Bumpers, um, current student at University of Arizona, um, but a uh, former uh, Marine buddy of mine from 37 India Company, 3rd Platoon, 3rd Squad. No shit, right? Um, got to hang out. We uh, originally started talking about UFC 223, and then as soon as we were done recording, guess what hit the news? Tony Ferguson out at UFC 223, so uh, we decided to get back in here and uh, do another hour and a half, because the first hour and a half uh, went to shit after that. (laughs) So uh, without further ado, uh, let's have some fun. Thanks for listening. We're back. Or I guess we're we're not back because the the first one got messed up. So uh, I I, I say again, I welcome back to the uh, podcast, my friend. Keyshawn Bumpers, what's going on, man? What's up, man? Just, you know, out here studying, doing the damn thing. Just doing it. Just trying to have a nice Easter. Just trying to go about our day. Tried to have a, tried to record this podcast earlier today. We did it in the afternoon. And then uh, we, as soon as we get off, literally like 10 minutes, as soon as we wrap it, we wrap up our, uh, our UFC 223 preview uh, news breaks that Tony Ferguson has a knee injury and is out. Uh, against um, Khabib uh, Nurmagomedov this weekend, so uh, we're back here now. We're gonna we're we're gonna be talking more about uh, uh, about uh, UFC 223 because it just shakes everything up. Yeah, I mean, fuck, I didn't expect it because Tony Ferguson talks so big and he he trashed Khabib so much on how many times Khabib has pulled out of fight and then. Lo and behold, you pull out you pull out of a fight. So where does that put you now? Right? I mean, it's uh it it's <clears throat> it this is the fourth time. Like uh I mean, you were texting me earlier when we were talking about this. This is uh every year pretty much for the past 4 years, almost like clockwork. Uh this fight gets put together and then someone uh, pulls out in 2015. Khabib uh, had that uh, like rib uh, rib strain or whatever it was. Uh, about about a, six weeks out from uh, the fight, and he pulls out. 2016, uh, you know, Tony with the the lung issue he had uh, you know blood and fluid and whatnot in his uh, in his lungs. Uh, that was like a week uh, or two weeks or something like that before. Uh, two weeks out from the fight. Uh, and then uh, last year, 2017, uh, Khabib pulls out two days, dude. Two, two days. days before it. Two days. That shit killed me. That shit <laughs> killed days. me, man. Uh, I know. We. I mean, it was like finally that we all thought that was gonna be the one, and then uh, and then now we're uh, we're one week out, we're six days out, and Tony pulls out with his knee injury. Did you see like the tweet he uh, he sent out about like doing it on a on a studio set for the pre-fight like. Uh, UFC, he's doing, you know, he's doing the press junket, the tour and whatnot for, uh, for all the stuff that they're going to be showing on TV this week. And he, I guess he tripped or something and he fucking like tore his like ligament off the bone is what Dana White said. Okay. (laughs) I need a minute. (laughs) Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a a minute. minute. You gotta give me some time to let that process in my head. So you mean tell me you tripped. Was it like a on, trip? Like a, on a, I, don't, I don't know. On like a boom arm or I don't know. Some fucking, there was an intern that was like leaving fucking banana peels around and this dude mario it on a, on a fucking banana peel. But I don't know. He, uh, he said that during a, <clears throat> there was an accident on set. <clears throat> Sorry. That is insane. But yeah, that's, uh, it's just silly. Um, so, uh, and then, uh, the Khabib posted a picture of, uh, you know, him, fucking mid-training going hey just shut your mouth from now on like uh rest up rest up i hope you i hope you get better 
but uh, but shut your mouth. And you know what? Khabib looks stacked right now. Yeah, dude, that's him. That and dude he's, looks huge. He's he's one week he's one week out from <laughs> from one fifty five, and that's what he looked like. Are you are you sure this man's not on steroids? <laughs> uh, yeah, I that mean, dude is he's hey, fucking he's, huge. He's a young kid, man. Ah, dude. I just I like I like the the makeup that they made in this match, though. Yes, uh, so uh, I should say that um, we don't get to look forward to Tony uh, Ferguson's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu versus uh, Khabib's dominant mauling uh, wrestling and grappling control. Uh, instead, we get the current 145-pound featherweight title holder, uh, Max Holloway. Um, yeah, I do. Who, uh, you, were t- you were saying earlier that, uh, remember his last fight... Uh, well, actually, no. His last fight was against uh, Aldo, right? Yeah, twice. Knocked him out twice. Yep. Friggin' that boy's done. Aldo's done. I mean, he had a. It was he had a fun career. I mean, he he established the uh, the featherweight division as his. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, his is his is no longer. And then it took 13 seconds for all that creation to go down the, seconds, down the drain 13 seconds and like six a good six months of trash talk yeah of just non-stop trash and talk. him pulling out and then, so i mean uh yeah so uh he uh max holloway beat uh he won the interim title uh after uh uh, after uh, it was vacated uh, by Aldo um, against Anthony Pettis at 206, mm. and then uh, beat it uh, when Aldo came back. He won the real title, uh, the real featherweight title, in 212. Uh, he knocked out Aldo, and then again uh, at 218 when Aldo came back for the rematch. For the rematch. So we get, uh, so we, and th- that's what makes uh, this. Uh, this matchup interesting with Holloway and Khabib is that Khabib, like the thing that uh, when I said that I was going to take Khabib over Tony, uh, it was because of uh, Khabib's just mauling nonstop pressure style. Well, Holloway's the same way. Holloway's, con- you know, he keeps up that relentless pace. He's, you know, got a, he's got four or five third round knockouts. Um, you know, it's frequently said that you know Max Holloway doesn't even start fighting until. <laughs> the third round like yeah uh it's going to so. take him a little it's going to take him a little bit to get adjusted but honestly like and people can bash me or say whatever they want but uh stylistically you can see how Khabib would fare how Khabib would work against an opponent similar to McGregor Max Holloway and Conor McGregor are kind of the same stylistically they kind of have the same style they throw kicks they're, they stand up, they fight, yeah. They, they they're they're good in a range of different things, but yeah, go on. But um, I feel like uh, on the feet, that's where Khabib's gonna his fall. He's gonna have to take him to the ground because on the feet, Max Holloway's gonna Max Holloway can bang on the feet. We've seen it yeah, time and time and he, again. Not only can he bang, he he can uh, he can take a hit, and also he uh, he when he he strikes hard he strike he hits fucking hard he knocks people out exactly when he gets uh when he gets going um, i feel like a and he doesn't tie he ke- he keeps up a pace too he doesn't uh, he doesn't tire out easily so uh that this inter- this match just got I, I i didn't think it could get more interesting than the f- the final showdown between tony and Khabib. but uh max holloway is a good uh is a good step up it was funny though. No mention of Conor McGregor coming in to defend his belt last night. Yeah, well, what is that about? What's that about? <laughs> I don't know, man. I honestly don't. Where you at, Mister McG? Where you at? <laughs> I don't know where you where you at, Mystic Mac. Um, I don't know, man. I don't think honestly. I don't think that McGregor has a new contract with UFC. I feel like they're still negotiating that, and they're close. But I know McGregor wants money. Because the draw from boxing, getting a hundred million dollars, he knows he's worth more than a hundred million dollars, and he wants a paycheck. I know he's also talked about him having a share of the UFC. He wants his name somewhere there. So um, maybe that's what's taking him long to come back. I know I follow him on Instagram, Twitter. I know he trains. He still trains. He's coming back. Yeah, he's been getting. 
I've seen he's been getting uh, really into uh, his jiu-jitsu. He's been really trying to focus on that. I think he was anticipating a Tony Ferguson match. But uh, the, it was funny because Dana White did say, I think he made a slip-up today. He fucked up when he was uh, handling all this. Because uh, it's April Fool's and he's fucking, he's trying to, uh, you know, tell the media that this is real. <laughs> and this isn't an April Fool's joke. So, uh, you know, he's trying to get the word out there. Max Holloway is replacing... Tony Ferguson for UFC 223, but he, uh, when someone asked him, someone was like, hey, you know, what about McGregor? How come he's not defending his, you know, this is his belt technically, and until, until this fight takes place, it's technically still his, so how come he's not coming in to fight last minute? And, uh, and he said, uh, we're looking at September for McGregor. We're looking at September for McGregor. So there it is. There's that... Uh, there's that they're like you know we want to we want to put in a nice little uh you know uh, we want to pump this promotionally we want to make sure we have enough time to really get the word out there really spread it um but he mentioned september i was like oh that's when they have that uh that moscow stadium oh, built. so that means khabib's or, gonna or, win uh, reserved i mean sorry um so yeah man i think they're that's what they're hoping for he's he's definitely crossing his arms hoping for uh a khabib uh, show out today and then uh, a Connor could be uh, showdown in in Moscow in September. I feel like that would be any way you put it, insane. I don't I don't think Khabib matches up against McGregor. <clears throat> no, what? I what? don't think he does because dude, if you look, Khabib is Connor's worst nightmare. I mean, in the sense that his wrestling game, but look at Chad Mendes. Chad Mendes is a good wrestler as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Connor did handle that very well. Very well. Um, Connor, the thing about people, Connor gets tired. That's his only problem. He does have that energy. If he does have you the... take If you give him cardio, Connor has one of the highest takedown, defense, takedown defenses in the division. His takedown defense... By necessity... By necessity. Yes. Also, he literally, this dude is literally like no other on the feet. Like no other. He's He is the best UFC fighter that can stand and bang. I doubt Khabib has that. I doubt it. Ooh, you're not a believer, man. Dude, this guy, I mean, I... I, I I like his style, and he just tends to maul people, and uh, it's just he controls the fight he's in to the point where he's 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 taking professional fighters like freaking uh, Michael Johnson, and while he's beating them over the head, he's going, "You have to give up. I've already won. I've already won. <laughs> just give up." Yeah, I think that's really funny. I've, but <laughs> yeah, you know. but it's just like, yeah, like it's just like any other fighter. Look at Aldo. No, I in Kuwait when we were talking about it with Yarb and Yarb was like, yeah, this dude, this this McGregor dude doesn't have anything against Aldo. Nothing, nothing. That Aldo, the best. Yes, whatever. Thirteen seconds. Like everybody, every time somebody <laughs> underestimates this dude, he goes out there and he he shuts people's mouth. He does it. And he, that's, and that's true. What, that's true. And that's why I believe. I mean, that's why I'm excited that, for it. That's why I'm excited for it. Because I'm, I especially like, uh, I'm a big, you know, notorious fan. I, uh, but I, uh, I really like the idea of him going into Moscow because that's when Connor's at his most showman, and he, when he's at his best is when he's going into someone else's house, going in the underdog. Everyone's rooting against him, and then he just. Comes in, takes care of business, or takes care of business, and uh, yeah, and, he thrives. Uh, he thrives on that. But honestly, it's like I feel like the moment you get a fighter that is superior, like takedown defense is just out of this world. Not taking him down, where's Khabib going to go? He's not going to be able to go nowhere. You you find a fighter that's well rounded in the clinch. Can strike in the clinch as well. Can get out the clinch. Knows how to manipulate themselves. Like Khabib's nothing. Like I said, his stand-up game is not that good. Uh, it has question marks. It's yet to be really tested. I exactly. I I want like man, dude. It's just 
I have so much I have so much uh faith in Connor is because like I wa- I watched him. I watched everyone doubt him telling him he has no chance. No chance to doing this, no chance to doing that. They didn't even think that he'd beat Eddie Alvarez for the title. No chance of being the first simultaneous UFC champion in the in the in the history. No chance. And what he do? He did it. He silences his mouth. That's all he does. He just tells people to shut up and when they don't he punches them in the face. <laughs> Shut up, kid. <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth. You only, you only fucking open your mouth when I tell you. You know, um, remember uh, Jeremy Stevens? Wait, who the fuck is that? <laughs> this, who the fuck is yeah, this guy? This dude is making noise too now. He's, he, he's going to fight true. Aldo. Um, yeah. uh, I'm actually, that's a good point. Uh, just really quickly before we move on, though, uh, we are talking about uh, McGregor Khabib. That would be exciting. Um, friggin' uh, Holloway, though, is the one that's going to be taking on uh, Khabib at UFC 223. Uh, that's uh, next weekend. Um, Holloway's on a 12 fight win streak. Um, and uh, just looking at the, the rest of the card here, the other uh, championship fight on that card is, of course, the rematch between Thug, Rose, Nama Yunez, and Joanna Yerchek, your girl, JJ. JJ champion. That's right. <laughs> JJ fucking champion. Uh, <clears throat> embarrassing defeat for uh, for Joanna last time in the first round. We just got pummeled in the face until she couldn't even yeah, see straight. Yeah. Um... You know, you, you no went words. to... I might cry right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was really shocked. Honestly, like that whole... That fight card that night, dude, I went 0 for 3. No, no, no. 1 for 3. Or 1... Yeah. No, 1 for 2. Because Cody <laughs> Cody lost that night. She lost that night. That's right. And um, GSP was the only one I wanted to win. GSP uh, beat Bisping. Did you see yeah. fucking Bisping that night? His cyborg eye? That shit like went like lights out. It was like flickering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's it's very true. And uh you're right, I think uh, that that card I wasn't too hot on either because I had Garbrandt winning that uh, one too. Yeah, um, man. Um But yeah, but uh but Thug Rose, um they're fighting uh women's straw weight, of course, one hundred and fifteen pounds. And uh, I'm going. I'm going to Thug Rose on that. She just is so calm. She does that freaky thing where she says the Lord's Prayer while she's in the fucking voodoo. She's doing the doing the Chant stare down. Voodoo. <laughs> and that fucking nah, voodoo. The, the voodoo. The voodoo is uh is coming from Joanna. She's the boogie. Nah, woman. that's fucking voodoo. When you don't know what the all you see is her mouth just moving. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah. That's voodoo. You wishing death upon somebody. Yeah, she's a she's a very she has a very blank stare. She has a very like she is a great poker yeah, face. Yeah, it's it's kind of like um she's used to it. Like she's seen what Joanna's done to all of her opponents, every single one, all the mind games. Yeah. So it's like after a point, it's like, it's like okay, I'm just gonna ignore it because I know it's a mind game, and that's what and that's where I think her advantage came from because Johanna usually gets to people's uh people's head and, and you, from then on you won you won the moment you that's the same thing with connor and aldo he won he won that mental warfare you won the dude's in your head already you get in the octagon you don't know what's gonna happen but like after a while this shit gets old you just gonna have to come out there and fight that's right that's right speaking of coming out and fight the rest of the card real quick let me uh get some quick predictions out of you uh Renato Mocano versus Calvin Qatar at uh, 145. Um, I don't know. I don't care to watch it. Don't give a fuck. Neither of them are good. Uh, Michael Chiesa versus Anthony Pettis. I got Pettis. Michael Chiesa uh, coming, re, um, uh, coming back off that loss. Uh, that it was an arguable, it was an arguable thing because uh, Mario Yamasaki is a very shit ref. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> he literally wa- let a girl get outstruck two hundred and something strikes to three, 
Um, yeah, that was real bad. That was uh, that was ugly to watch. Yeah, before stopping the fight. So um, I'm going to go with Michael Chiesa. Uh, Anthony Pettis to me is uh, he needs to change camps. He needs to go somewhere else. Um, I feel like he has the skills to to bounce back. But, you know, like he, this might be a slump in his career, and I know a lot of fighters go through it and they could bounce back and they end up coming back and making uh, title runs. Look at Dustin Poirier uh, coming out. he been winning late as of late. So, um, but I got uh, Michael Chiesa. I think uh, he has a lot of talent. Got a prediction? Got a round? A um, submission? What's going on here? I say Michael Chiesa third round by submission. Safe. Safe. Uh, rounding out the card is uh, Al Iaquinta and Paul Felder. At uh, again that uh, that lightweight division, that stacked lightweight division. I got Paul, the Irish Dragon, Felder, with a sweet Paul, Paul, the pale fuck <laughs> Felder. <laughs> Yo, I I got him winning in fucking amazing fashion in the first round. Fucking head kick to the head kick, fucking head kick. KO. <laughs> Winning in the first round by KO. Head kick. Okay, we'll be looking out for that one. Uh, so that's the main card. That's on at 10 p.m. <clears throat> uh, UFC pay-per-view, obviously. Uh, on FS1, for you free fucks who don't want to pay for shit. Just uh, go to B-dubs. Fox Sports 1. Uh, yeah, or if you just want to go to a place that's trying to fight, like uh, B-dubs. Although B-dubs sucks. I'll just you say kiss that. my ass. Um, no, dude, fucking, it's the worst. You're the worst. It's the worst. I'm not gonna, not gonna get into it. Not gonna <laughs> You're the get worst, into it. but I'm not complaining. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the prelims are on at eight uh, p.m. Eastern time um, on FS1. The uh, card for that is Carolina Kowalkovic versus Felice Herrig uh, in the uh, women's was a straw weight one fifteen. Yep, women's straw weight. The skinny fucks. <clears throat> so winner of this might be looking to move up and uh, might get some some time with uh with the champ mm. in a in a little no. bit. Oh, uh, maybe Carolina. Maybe maybe Carolina. Maybe her. Yeah, maybe or Carolina. Sorry, I keep saying Carolina. Uh, Carolina. Maybe Carolina. Uh, let's see here. Ray Borg versus Brandon Moreno at. Uh, at 125. I'm going to call him Ray Moore because he's dead to me after what DJ did to that ass. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker Ray Moore. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, all right, all right. So you're taking uh, you're taking Brandon Moreno with that <laughs> Ray one. Ray Moore, that man's, uh, that right, that man's dead. <laughs> then we got uh, Joe Lauzon versus uh, Chris Grutzemacher. Is he German? If he's German, I got the German. They it says both United States, but uh, that is a German last name. It is a very German last name. Although he looks Armenian-ish. Oh well, Joe Lauzon is going to get KO because he has no chin on him. His 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 shit's been getting pounded for for years. So. Yeah, yeah, he's been uh, he's been a perennial. Punching bag. I mean, geez, dude. Uh, the final fight on the prelims is Evan Dunham versus uh, Olivier Aubin Mercier mm. uh, out of Canada. At uh, again, that lightweight division, 155. Stacked, 155 division. Yeah, that division um, is real stacked. Um, yeah. Uh, nothing. Do you have anything else you want us to talk about the about any um, of those fights? The prelims, those not really. Um, honestly, I'm not too interested in the prelims. The main card is mine. And being that being said, that the two fights, the co-main event, and the main event, are the fights that I'm looking forward to. But every time I do say that, 
the prelims are just filled with just knockouts, like rampages of knockouts, like people getting their shit pushed in. And then the main card goes up there and it's just like a, a slugfest until you get to the last two fights and they have to make up for the main card. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll still be tuning in to both uh, just because I'm a fight fan in general. And I like looking at the new talent because usually on the prelims, you got the new talent or like the ones or the up and coming stars or like people making debuts like kind of like a what's that old boy name sugar Sh- sugar sean o'malley sure yeah. sean o'malley 135 um won a fight with like a broken ankle or something like that his last fight he broke his ankle in the fight and instead of his opponent m- making him like stay on his feet because the referee would stop the fight if he couldn't walk forward he would stop the fight the dude would have won by a TKO or something. Um, no, he decides to take him to the ground and lay on top of him. Clearly, you've been got, you've gotten butchered the whole fight, and this kid <laughs> yeah. happened to break his foot, and you laid on top of him. <laughs> I just do not understand. Like you literally could have took the easy way out and took a W. <laughs> But you laid on top of someone when, that you were already down to. I mean, to each their own, man. He's he's still undefeated. He's an upcoming star. Uh, some things I I liked I would like to see from him is him work on his cardio. Other than that, man, that he's a pretty bad dude. Well, that's the uh, that's the prelims uh, and the main card. The only other thing is the early prelims on uh, UFC Fight Pass at six fifteen p.m. Eastern Time. The only fight on that one is uh, Alex uh, Caceres versus Artem Lobov. And the only reason this is interesting, the only reason that I'm bringing this up, as you know, is because Artem Lobov trains uh, in Conor McGregor's camp. It's one of Conor McGregor's boys. Yeah, I mean. Saying that's on the fight pass, I don't think anybody's gonna watch that. The fucking, the fucking. St- well, no, but uh, the the reason I bring it up obviously is because uh, this is what makes the UFC fun. Is because Connor's gonna be at the fight. He's gonna come to watch his boy Artem. Yeah, <clears throat> and he's gonna be there when uh, Holloway and Khabib go at it. And you know, after whoever wins that one, be it Holloway, be it Khabib, they're gonna get on the mic and they're gonna start talking shit about Mister Fucking. Irishman McNuggets yeah, over there, Irish. and Connor's gonna have something to say. You know he's, his ass is gonna hop yeah, in he's that gonna cage. say something. <laughs> um, I feel um, the fight pass fight. McGregor's gonna be in the back in the back with uh, Artem, and then once the main car starts, he's gonna go out and he's gonna have his own seat with his camp. You'll be in prime he's time. Like, you know he's gonna be yeah, wilding out. You know though. he's gonna do his little money <laughs> sign. With his, yeah, with his, with his little, his little, his eyes, his little scary eyes. But um, I don't know, man. I mean, Max Holloway can't really say much to about McGregor. So, um, not unless he wants that ass to come back down to the 145 and take that um, shit from him too. Well, if you, if you know when, I'm just talking shit. when uh, McGregor first started fighting. Max Holloway's last loss was to Conor McGregor, and McGregor had a torn ACL. He tore his ACL in that fight. Still took him to five uh, five rounds, won the fight. Um, but then again, you can't really count on that as saying that if if the the two were to come back and fight again, that um, McGregor would win right off the bat. Because both of them have grown as tremendous fighters, and as you can tell, um, Max Holloway's a champion, McGregor's a champion. So that'd be a, that'd be a badass super fight. Holloway is that would be a, a badass super fight. I mean, that's what, why this is so interesting. I mean, if Khabib wins, we see hopefully a Khabib Connor match in Moscow, which is uh, you know for the lightweight uh, a title, which would just be you know, a, a crazy super fight there. If Holloway wins, then we see a double champ facing a double champ. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, and then that just throws into discussion this whole 145 to 155 realm. I mean, 
you know, you're talking about people that can be jumping up and down in weight classes left, you know, left and right. So, um, uh, you know, that he definitely makes it interesting. Holloway is on a, uh, like I said, he's on that 12 fight win streak. His last loss was to Conor McGregor in 2013. Um, you know, that went to decision. So, uh, those are, those were two completely, almost two completely different fighters back then. So you're not really talking about the same thing there, but, um, as you are now, but, uh, that's why, that's why this whole, this, this fight just got yeah, even more interesting, even though we lost Tony, even though that sucks and we, uh, we lose Tony Ferguson, um, we still get, uh, still get a good fight and hopefully we still keep some some tension mounting for uh my only concern about this fight is none of us know if max holloway has been training or has done anything since he pulled out of 222 with the injury um well, that was just last month, so we're assuming that he had what was what was the injury that I'm, he went I down? I think with it was a hand injury. UFC two twenty two. It was a hand injury. So I mean, you know, you're you're talking about, you know, he he might still be able to do some stuff. He might be able to get in some work for a month. So he might not have been down the entire month. He might have only had like a sprain or a or a or a strain or something like that that just needed some minor rehab. I mean, if it's only been four or five weeks. Since he, you know, or six weeks at most since he pulled out of that fight for 222. And, uh, and he's, you know, he was probably, you know, damn near in fight shape then. He's, you know, probably not too far off of it now as long as he kept, you know, kept up on it. If the rehab went fairly well and fairly quick, you know, it only took two, three weeks and he's been training for two, three weeks. That to me seems like a, you know, damn near a, as close to a perfect camp as you can get if you only get a one month setback yeah absolutely um i just i don't know man uh I, max holloway is also a cardio beast so that would be pretty interesting to see yeah they're yeah they're uh both of their stamina and their ability to just put the pressure on it's going to be intense and going to make the fight interesting so you're, you're going holloway um uh, I don't know, man. My my uh my prediction went from Tony to up in the air. I don't. I'm not sure. You originally had Tony, and now now you don't know. I don't know. I had Tony because uh, I. I'm sticking with Khabib. I'm I sticking had with Tony Khabib. because I feel like he deserves it. Like you hear this dude talk, and he's like, um, how. Like, he doesn't knock McGregor, but, like, McGregor used, like, a uh, cheat code. Like, he used his mouth to get to get to where he is, and he didn't he didn't do that. And, like, a lot of fighters are trying to do that now, but he didn't get to do that. And he's right. Like, McGregor did use his mouth to get to where he is, and Tony climbed the ranks by beating people's ass day in and day out all the time. So... That's, uh, that, that's I true. I feel like he I mean, earned you know, it. Like that's definitely a different I feel style. like him going and him winning. Um, I feel like him going and him winning. Um, he definitely, he definitely um uh, deserves to win that title. Um, as for Khabib, he is undefeated. And he's he's destroyed, just a monster. He's just a he's monster. destroyed everyone in stylistic fashion of just butchering you. Yeah, only been really uh, shaken up once. Only been shaken up once, and it was in again. It was in that Michael Johnson fight, which he you know turned right around and handled perfectly. So, um, I'm going Khabib. I think he's got that shit. Uh, I think it'll be make it even more interesting when he uh, he beats Holloway, because uh, <clears throat> uh, he's gonna want to go after Connor, and uh, then he might have a case to just say fuck it, might as well just go beat Holloway at his weight, and then uh, just hold three titles at one time, head up to 170, and fucking take out Woodley. Um, but uh, that's just that's just me going on a on a Khabib streak that might never happen. Uh, but that is uh, UFC 223. That's pretty much uh, it. I think we covered everything there. Uh, that's Saturday, April 7th. 
Again, the main card start, or I'm sorry, the UFC Fight Pass, the early prelims, uh, start at 6.15 Eastern Time, FS1 pre, uh, on FS1, the early prelims, uh, with Kowalkovich, uh, Herrig, Borg, Moreno, Lauzon, Gretschmaker, Dunham, Albin, Mercier, that starts at 8 Eastern, and the main card starts at 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, featuring championship fights, Rose Naman Nunez versus Yuana Yerchik and Max Holloway versus Khabib Nurmagomedov. Uh, that's pretty much it for that one. Uh, moving right along. Um, the next uh, big UFC event uh, is in April. Uh, UFC Fight Night, uh, which is in uh, April 21st uh, in my hometown. Atlantic City, New Jersey. Oh, yeah, you got... Um, got... Cup. Yeah, we uh, lightweight uh, a lightweight match between Edson Barboza and Kevin Lee, um, which should be pretty interesting. Then you got a, uh, a featherweight between uh, Frankie Edgar and Cub Swanson. Okay, now we're good. I just fixed it. I guess I had to pause it and then redo it. But um, yeah, Cub and Frankie, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Um, I say. Frankie goes to the moon again. That's just me. <laughs> oh he, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He needs to take a little time off after that. Like he, he was like a he was like a fucking god damn it, dude. That fucking that knockout was fucking brutal. That was brutal. Uh, he got he was like a fucking spaceship, bro. Like <laughs> I was just like, holy shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that <laughs> was makes uh, me laugh. Yeah, he got his shit rocked. Uh, but uh, then, uh, of course, Edson Barboza and Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee uh, was the one who uh, lost his or lost the uh, interim belt to Tony Ferguson. Uh, yep, Tony Ferguson put that man in that triangle choke. Yep. And uh, a couple, two other uh, fights on there that might be interesting to watch. Uh, there's a middleweight bout between David Branch and Tiago Santos, and uh, a bantamweight bout between uh, Aljamain Sterling and uh, Brett Johns. Um, Aljamain Sterling, uh, he definitely is garbage. Um, <laughs> his last fight, he got knocked the fuck out too. So, I mean, I'm not too sure what you want to see from that, but yeah. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully he has a better outing, and if not, uh, we can say we called it here. Um, yep, you heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, KJB calling it live. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, after that, next one uh, that looks pretty interesting is UFC 224, of course. May 12th in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Ooh, so spicy. Uh, Ooh. The Ooh. headliner for that is women's bantamweight uh, title fight with the champion Amanda Nunez taking on challenger Raquel Pennington. Raquel Pennington. I don't don't know, not even, dude. Um, <laughs> well, it was supposed to originally be uh, Nunez versus Cyborg, but uh, Cyborg um, took that bullshit fight she took uh, two two UFCs ago, three UFCs ago. Yeah, Cyborg just needs to fight uh, Megan Anderson already. Um, but as for Amanda Nunez, she's gonna. Uh, I don't. I'm not even gonna call that and say it because you might see an upset and Raquel Pennington just KOs her. <laughs> um, I mean, geez, I, I want to see Amanda Nunez and Cyborg because Amanda, uh, the thing about this Amanda Nunez, I don't like her because Cyborg was trying to be like more like genuine, like, oh no, like Brazilians, like she's Brazilian, I'm Brazilian, like we don't fight each other. And Chris Cyborg was basically telling her how. I like we don't Brazilians don't fight Brazilians. I like I don't want to fight her. And then Amanda Nunes called her out and basically was like, yeah, like fuck you. Like I don't care if you're Brazilian, I can beat you. And so now Chris Cyborg is like, okay, bitch, like we can go run this shit. I haven't been beaten. I fucking maul people. <laughs> <laughs> right. So like I don't I don't I don't think that. Um. Amanda Nunes is any type of match for her because like, her, her her last fight um, 
was it iffy. I don't think she should have won that against Valentina Shevchenko, but mm. um, I feel like that. I mean, it's just gonna put, get that ass. Yeah, I put, putting her in a what the fuck? Putting her in a fight against Cyborg is not the best thing because like. Unless you're a Holly Holm and you have some type of experience, and like even Holly Holm then like look like an amateur against her, um, she was the first fighter to take her five rounds. But like, yeah, first one I feel that like actually put up a fight like that. <laughs> she definitely looked like an amateur in the sense that, like, Holly Holm should have been the one counter striking, not Chris Cyborg shouldn't have been the one counter striking. Um. Yeah, dude. I just, I just don't see Amanda Nunes having any trouble that. With Pennington at all. Yeah, and I don't, and I don't see uh, Amanda Nunes giving Chris Cyborg a run for her money. I, I, I don't see that. That's <laughs> Cyborg's too dominant. She might be the mo- she might be the pound for pound greatest fighter. Yeah, <laughs> fucking above <laughs> Anderson Silva. Yeah, fuck, that. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. She's the that, scariest. That's a, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, scary so again, uh, uh, other fights on UFC 224 in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, middleweight bout between Ronaldo Souza and Kelvin Gastelum. Kelvin no Gastelum reaction from bumpers. He doesn't nasty. like those people. Uh, Kevin Gastelum is a hit or miss. I mean, um, I I want to see Chris Weidman cut back. <laughs> I'm, I miss him for a minute. Chris Chris Wyman's been gone for a while. He his last fight was against Kelvin Gastelum, and he looked fucking like championship Chris Weidman um, in that fight. So, uh, other uh, I got women's strawweight Mackenzie Dern versus Amanda Cooper. Oh, Mackenzie Dern, dude! I'm not even gonna talk about this girl fighting. I'm talking about her titties. <laughs> her ass, bruh, bruh. Those, oh my god, those things are fucking gorgeous, man. Uh, but then again, she can knock you the fuck out. Um, no, you gotta be careful. She's not that good. Um, maybe ground wise, striking wise, no, she has a long way to go. She needs to get on that real fast. If she wants to be a, a dominant, a very dominant fighter, she definitely needs to. Uh, Go ahead and uh, fix that striking problem to where she's uh, well-rounded and she can use her jujitsu to the best of her ability, based off the based off the fact that she knows how to strike. So, mm. yeah, she's a solid win. Uh, not even a solid win. I think I believe it was split decision her last fight. Um, but yeah. Uh, I think that yeah, over time she's getting better. That was her UFC debut, so like I'm not really expecting much. It's gonna take her a little bit to climb up those ranks and uh, make a name for herself. I mean, the only name she got from me is Big Ass Titties. That's it. <laughs> That's about it. I'm sure you're gonna get a bunch of fan mail uh, <laughs> about that. Uh, oh, oh yeah! Please, please send uh, me all. The, please send me hate mail too. I like it. <laughs> uh, another fight on UFC 224, May 12th in Rio, is middleweight bout between Vitor Belfort and Lyoto Machida. That's the last fight. That's his last one. Vitor's done <laughs> after that one. <laughs> no more. No more. Yeah, um, I feel like uh, Lyoto's on his way out too. But some of these dudes, man, they. They like getting knocked out. I don't know. Like they get like <laughs> they bust. <laughs> they, they like they want to get knocked the fuck out. Like all right, we good. Yeah, <laughs> what are you trying to get knocked out for? Like after a while, like if that were me, I'm 30, 35, 36. I'm not getting knocked out no more. Like I like my chin. <laughs> uh, any uh, any interest in bantamweight bout? John Lineker versus Brian Kelleher. Ooh, John Lineker, heavy hands. Oh, heavy hands! This man will. This man could KO you at a moment's notice. <laughs> John Lineker, so, he's nice, on, but you're on lookout, Brian Kelleher. Watch out. But 
I, uh, uh, the uh, the only other thing about this that is interesting uh, broke a couple of days ago some news uh, that possibly RDA Rafael Dos Anjos might fight Colby Covington for the interim welterweight title. Oh, while Colby Covington is out with uh, with shoulder surgery. Oh, Colby Covington, it's about time you put your money where your mouth is. You've been, you've been, he's been chanting. <laughs> he's been chanting. Dude's been, been chanting all day. So we're tired of Woodley. Stop running from me. Stop this. Stop that. Okay, well, you got a new and improved RDA that you're about to fight. Um, 170 style RDA Nah, this ain't 155 RDA This 170 And he looks good up there, 170 But, um, I don't know man I think uh, Kobe Covington comes out with this one Uh Yeah, yeah dude, I feel like Kobe Covington Is just a Is a nightmare in, at, at 170 But, we'll see Um He's, uh, definitely Definitely, uh his time to put well, his money uh, where his mouth is. <clears throat> so Kobe, uh, his his last win was against uh, Damian Maya, right? Damian, I like to sit on my back and do jujitsu, Maya. I I don't want to stand on the feet. I just want to <laughs> lay down and I want you to rest on top of me and I just try to submit you the whole time. Yeah, right. Fuck that, dude. Yeah. Well. Uh, well. Of course. Uh, Kobe beat my. That was his last fight. So he apparently the rumor is that they're putting together a fight for UFC 224 between RDA uh, versus Covington to take yep. over uh, the the interim welterweight belt while uh, Tyron Woodley is out. Of course, Tyron Woodley, his last fight uh, was that lackluster performance against also Damian. Uh, please let me submit you, Maya. Um, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> it's it's the, the best. Dude. You're not you don't um, like you 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 haven't been you haven't been on too hot on Woodley recently after no, the two Thompson uh, fights and the Maya fight, huh? Yeah, no, he's his uh, he's the way he beat Robbie Lawler. I had a lot more out of him that he could go out there and he could figure out how to how to get that done just like that every single time or some way just. Like, I feel like if you're a champion, dude, like, you have, like, contenders coming up to you. Like, you're the champion, and you're the champion for a reason. You should be fucking destroying people. Right. You should be like fucking Tom Brady, bro. When Tom Brady gets gets on the fucking field, he's destroying people. Like, regardless yeah. of regardless of win or loss, he's destroying people. Like, he's fucking putting up numbers like no other. So, like, I feel like that being being said as a champion like you should be doing that you shouldn't have the lowest strikes in ufc his title fight history like you shouldn't have that like that shouldn't be a thing like you should be hanging and banging putting it all on the table because that's what you want to do because you're a champion and you go out there win or loss you go out there you put it all on the table and i don't feel like he doesn't do i don't feel like he does it and uh of course uh rda uh his last uh win was against robbie lawler as well uh you just mentioned him talking about woodley that's who woodley won the belt from um, yeah robbie lawler's been trying to come back but i don't know not, not cutting it but uh rda rda uh the w- in a hypothetical bout between uh rda and uh Sorry, fucking uh, Covington. You're taking uh, you're taking Covington, or you taking? Uh, I take Kobe. You taking Kobe? Yeah, Kobe Covington. And then uh, so Kobe wins. You think he's got a he's got the shot for that Woodley? Nah, bro. When, when Woodley comes back, no. Nope. Nah? I think the winner, the winner of the Darren Till Wonder Boy, has a, the next the title shot against uh, Woodley, and I oh, feel. Yeah. Well, and I that's a- feel, <laughs> and I feel that Darren Till will be Wonder Boy, and Darren Till will go on and smoke check Tyron Woodley. Smoke check Tyron yep. Woodley. Wow. Well, that's the that's the next big fight uh, after UFC 224 is UFC Fight Night in Liverpool, yeah. UK. Uh, that's May 27th, so that's uh, about two weeks after after 224, and 
And uh, you're right. The the headline fight there is the welterweight fight between Stephen Thompson, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson versus Darren. I don't know his nickname till. And uh, I think it's the gorilla, honestly. The gorilla, uh, yeah. Darren, the gorilla till. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, that should be a good one. I like uh, Darren Till. You're right. I think he's got. He's got something special, and uh, that would be a, an exciting match. Either Till and Covington, maybe, uh, depending. I don't know how long Woodley's going to be out. He said he he was on uh, Joe Rogan the other day. I think he said he might be out uh, or last week, a couple weeks ago or something like that. And I think he uh, said he was looking at possibly fighting uh, August, maybe or early at, Possibly as early as April, but they he were looking already, more like they were looking but, at more like August. Uh, but time the, frame. the man, the man has already <laughs> had so, shoulder surgery. Like, come on, man! I like you get some pretty fucking good medical care. Like, um, well, he's working on it. You know, you can't rush the process. Yes, you can rush the process. <laughs> How comes Gordon Hayward is um, already shooting the ball again? He, this dude destroyed his leg. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you mean to tell me you cannot rush the process? You can definitely rush that process. It just takes. Well, uh, I think Gordon Hayward doesn't have the same consequences when he goes out to do his job as Woodley does when he goes and does his job. When Woodley goes out, he if he ain't fully prepped. You know, he might die, whereas oh, Gordon yeah, Hayward right. ain't fully prepped. He might just aggravate the sprain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. He, get, he might thing. get pushed the wrong way and, like, destroy his ankle again or just, something oh, like no. that. Oh, no. Now I can't play basketball ever again versus yeah. <laughs> death. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, some pretty long time DJ is probably not coming back for a while either because he's injured as well uh, that's right uh, good old mighty mouse uh, we were talking about that uh, we were talking about that before about how that uh, the the lack of superstars in, um, in the UFC right now is kind of hurting the business model and the fact that they can't find a good fight for Mighty Mouse. They can't find a good fight for, uh, you know, he's been up and down, like I said, he's been up and down that division two times. Uh, and, you know, it, people don't want to tune in because they know he's just going to piece somebody up perfectly uh, and, and get the win. And um, uh, I, I'm a big fan of whether it's TJ Dillashaw or whether it's Cody Garbrandt or whoever it is at the 135 uh, dropping down. And, uh, it's not going to be Garbrandt. Garbrandt couldn't even defend his title. Um, well, I mean, time. he took the title. Yeah, well, I mean, he took the title from Cruz. You know, Cruz got it from Dillashaw. So right now, it's just a, it's a, it's a rope of dope. It's a, it's just you know, pass the baton, just like that women's uh, bantamweight <sighs> division title is. It's the same thing. They're just passing that shit around left and right, waiting until it lands on somebody. I feel like if a uh, uh, dominant Cruz. Um, wasn't fighting the same people in uh, Team Alpha Male for like the fourth time. Um, I feel like uh, he would have definitely whooped the shit out of Cody Garbrandt if Cody Garbrandt didn't have Team Alpha Male because his, that was his fourth time fighting the same coach. Like that's the same time fighting the same dude, three different uh, two two different people. Your eye favor fought him three times, beat him once, couldn't beat him the next two times. Like he annihilated him the last time. Um, and then you have Cody Garbrand, who's like an upcoming star. And like Cody Garbrand kind of, kind of made him look like a fucking clown. But like, I mean, what do you expect? Like, I would expect that after you've been fighting a dude from the same team four fucking times. Like, that's kind of. That's kind of like bad. Like you're a shitty coach if you face a team four times and you cannot the same team. You cannot figure out how to fucking beat them. Like that's shitty coaching. Like three <coughs> times, three, yeah. three times. Like that's a shitty ass game plan, bro. You better come up with a new one. <laughs> you better go back to the drawing board. Yeah, dude. Like that's fucking pathetic, dude. Like four times. 
You won one time You got Your ass whooped The next two times Like I don't know yeah. man This is um, So uh <clears throat> That's uh That's UFC fight night That's Liverpool May 27th Uh Walter Wade, Stephen Thompson versus Darren Till. After that, you got UFC 225, which is in Chicago. That's June 9th. Uh, that one should be could be fun for a couple of reasons. Number one, middleweight bout. Uh, champion Robert Whitaker will be uh, defending his title in a rematch against Yoel Romero. Yoel Romero. Yoel Romero is like 40 years old. 40 year old Cuban <laughs> Man that man look better than most people bruh <laughs> Yo he is a savage That dude he, trains hard He is different I like him though But Robert Whitaker said if he can't make weight He's not fighting him mm. And that is a pro- Has been a problem for uh, Romero In the past he didn't make weight his last fight right Or his last two fights the last fight he didn't make weight because I don't know why he didn't make weight. I'm professional. Yeah, he just missed about like a good like three pounds, three and a half pounds, something like that. Yeah, but um, so three and a half pounds that... is like motherfucking might as well be ten pounds over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, he did beat what's his name? Who did he beat? Yo, he knocked out Luke Rockhold once again. Luke Rockhold talking shit. Talking yep. shit, talking shit. And talking you think shit. about it, I think uh, Luke Rocco should shut his mouth now because he talked shit about Bisping. Bisping knocked him the fuck out on a short notice. He talked shit to Yo Romero. Yo Romero knocked his ass out on short notice. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like uh, Luke Rocco needs to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't I don't like Luke Rocco. I actually don't like any of the fighters from AKA. The the camp from um, DC or DC fights. Maybe Khabib. No. Maybe Khabib is the only one because Khabib fights out of there. It's the only one I like. Or I like can uh, can uh, you know deal with. But the, all the other ones are like fucking annoying. Cain Velasquez is a fucking injury fucking prone douchebag. Um, and yeah, but they do. They uh they make they put out good good fighters over there, dude. Yeah. You're naming a bunch of good fighters right now. In the name of uh, getting knocked out. <laughs> Fucking uh, also on UFC 225, women's strawweight, Claudia Gadella versus Carla Esparza. Ooh. Do either of those names mean anything to you, Bumpers? Um, Carla Esparza was the first strawweight champion, and Claudia Gadella um, definitely lost to Johanna. Pretty sure three times. So, I mean, that's ding, the ding, only ding, thing. ding, ding. That is correct. And also, it doesn't matter who wins this fight because they're gonna lose their next one. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, also on the card, featherweight or no? I'm sorry. Is this flyweight? This might be a flyweight match. Joseph Benavidez versus Sergio Pettis. Oh yeah, Joseph Benavidez. He's been trying for his third shot at DJ, but I don't think this dude will ever get it. Because the last time, the first time, it was iffy if DJ won that. The second time, DJ knocked his, sh- knocked his shit in, like knocked him out, like cold. And now he's trying to strive for another one. I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen. Well, he's going to get through Sergio Pettis first. Um, uh, and then a uh, fun thing on that mat, or on that card, uh, heavyweight Alistair Overeem makes his return from the grave uh, versus Curtis Blades. Uh, of course, Overeem got knocked to the fuck out uh, <laughs> by, uh, <laughs> by Francis Ngannou, the man with the hands. Uh, uh, that was that was one of the more fun. <laughs> that was the that was probably like the knockout of the year. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, I mean, I don't know. <clears throat> we shall see. Um, no the yet. only other thing about about Chicago June 9th is that uh, <clears throat> for UFC 225, CM Punk tweeted. Uh, this was like 
earlier this month, this was like March 12th, March 15th, something like that. Uh, he, he tweeted that he said he would be fighting at this event. So my question to you bumpers is, do we see a CM Punk versus Floyd money, the money team, the money is all I'm about. I'm all about my money. Mayweather at uh, UFC 225 in Chicago. Uh, versus CM Punk. I don't want to see Floyd Mayweather in the octagon. I mean, his only, <laughs> his only pull is against fucking CM Punk. Any other fighter, he's going to get his fucking shit fucking reamed. So <laughs> that's right. I mean, you know, you can't put Mayweather in there against Connor. He's gonna fucking literally kill him. Uh, I think I think the CM Punk w- uh, way to go is the only way to go because uh, it's you know it, it's spectacle. It's not real fighting to me. People yeah. who aren't tra- people who aren't trained really not trained like the the rest. You know, you look at anybody else on that card. These are people that have been doing this professionally, training their entire lives for this. Whereas these guys are like, yeah, I can do that. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't know, but the only also, there's only one thing that Floyd Mayweather has, and that is his boxing skills. That's the only thing that he has that's going to take him to the next level. If he can, if he knows how to stand up and protect himself from getting taken down, then he's fine. He's, he, no one's going to beat yeah. him in uh, boxing, but... Yeah, except, except for when he gets a fucking kick to the face. Well, yeah, that's he's gonna get He's going to get that first kick to the face and realize how hard that shit comes in. And he's going to be like, oh... I need to go back to Showtime. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my limo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's my limo? I got I to gotta go back to Showtime, dog. We, we, we don't need they to just be call no me. more. We got we to gotta have a meeting. We got to have a meeting. <laughs> We gotta get the money team on this. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's UFC 225 Chicago uh, in June, and then of course the super fight. Uh, this is the pretty the much as far out fight. as we go. Just call it the Stipe fight. No the one... Stipe DC super fight. It's the Stipe fight. <clears throat> this is a uh, July Fourth weekend. It's actually on July seventh. Is the uh, is the date of the fight? It's in Las Vegas, um, and it uh, for those of you who don't know who features current light heavyweight title holder Daniel Cormier uh, versus current heavyweight title holder and uh, three time defending, four time defending, three time. Uh, Three-time defending champion Stipe Miocic. Uh, this fight will be at heavyweight for the heavyweight title. So light heavyweight usually fights at uh, 205. Um, anything over that, but uh, anything under 265 fights at heavyweight. Uh, if anybody else was confused, I was. I looked it up. That's why I know. And um, <clears throat> so they're going to be fighting. So DC is going to move up a weight class. He's going to fight Stipe. Winner will get the heavyweight title. Uh, so if DC does it, it'll be the uh, the second person to win a or hold two belts at the same time. Unless, of course, uh, Max Holloway wins this weekend. Um, what do you think about this fight, though? Uh, um, DC versus Stipe. Stipe is going to knock DC out. Second round. Oh, man, I don't see it, dude. I don't see it. And the more I think about it, the more I just don't see it. I mean, I like Stipe. I just don't think he's going to knock him out. I think he's going to knock out DC. <clears throat> I think Stipe takes... Uh, <clears throat> I think he takes a couple rounds to kind of feel DC out. I think DC uh, gets some good strikes in. I think uh, it's obviously going to go to the ground. It's going to go to the grappling. It's going to go to the wrestling. They're both supreme wrestlers. They're both uh, top of their game when it comes to... Uh, position control and uh, but uh, you know, uh, maintaining maintaining control while they're while they're on the ground. There's a so. fierce there's a fierce kick coming. There's a, there's fierce, a fierce there's a kick? fierce kick coming from Stipe to DC's head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we'll see. I mean, that's uh, this is again like what we were saying about you know UFC's lack of uh, superstars. They uh, they need to. They've been doing more of these kind of super fights like this, where they're they're getting people to go cross divisions, ca- cross weight classes, um, fighting for multiple belts at the time to- at the same time, uh, fighting in multiple divisions in the same year. 
uh, you know, trying to get the stars in each division uh, aligned just so, so that way they can produce one or two superstars that kind of transcend the sport. So far, they've only had success with uh, Conor McGregor and uh, for a limited time, Ronda Rousey, but... Um, don't that, even that's one of the, a, one. a a a don't even <laughs> don't even bring don't up your girl. Even, that's, that's your girl, man. That's not my girl. No, no, that's no. That's your girl. As dude. I told you, it took me a long time to realize what kind of piece of shit that girl, that woman is. And she, I'm so yeah, glad she's just a poor sport, man. She very, cannot take very poor. like you know. I mean, she's over here. I mean, I don't want to talk bad. I don't want to be morbid. I don't want to make crude jokes about. I want to make crude know, jokes su- about suicide her. rates and stuff like that. But you know, she was apparently suicidal after her uh, after her loss, and uh, apparently again even more so after her attempted comeback and failed uh, uh, attempt. And uh, and then uh, at, from do, from from doing all that, from saying that you're gonna go from the t- you want to be the, the the best of all time, the greatest of all time, and then you lose, and then you go if if you really did go suicidal, and then you try to come back and you make it through, yay, that's a champion story. But if you then lose again and you're a failed attempt to come back, and then you you know you go down that depression again and you're you know I might never ever come out of my hole again. I'm a, you know you you're sending tweets about your suicidality things like that. Yeah, I mean, and we well, I mean you know we're I'm all on board. I'm you know let's let's support let's support her with whatever attempt that she needs to come back and try to you know maintain you know a positive life outlook. But if she wants to come back and then be like, well, the only way for me to come back respectfully is to do it through the WWE is like, OK, we get it. You're washed up. Like, you don't have the mental capacity to, to be in the UFC anymore. You can't go in and get your your face kicked in. Got it. We got that. Uh, <clears throat> you want to do the WWE? You want to be in show business? Sure. Go ahead. But then you want to fucking sit there and have issue with every single reporter or anybody that wants to bring up your losses or anybody who wants to, you just call it, you can't just keep, you can't call everyone a hater that, you know, says not something bad at you, bad about you, but just says something about you. If it, you know, you lost, you know, that, that interview on ESPN with Max Kellerman on first take with, uh, fucking, uh, Stephen A. Smith, you know, she's on there and she's, uh, you know, he asks her like, "Did you feel any of the, you know, the real animosity and the hate that you know came with uh, when you lost the first time?" Da-da? And she's just, you know, got the fucking permanent bitch face on her fucking face, and just like, you know, not giving him any time of day. Not get during an interview on live TV. It's just like, you, this is your chance. I to think pimp, she should be you know, banned pimp, from pimp doing your those. Shit out. She should be banned from doing those. She shouldn't yeah. be allowed on those anymore. Very, if she wanted to come on this podcast. So I'd say, n- not even fuck a. Off. Not even a like talk show person. Like, go stay in WWE where everything is fake, like your life. Like, yeah. The only on the only thing that old nose look of yours. The only thing that's real about your life is what you've accomplished in judo. And I'm sorry. I'm gonna go on. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Like the meme. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Your her mom dr- drug her through her t- her judo times. Her mother did that. Her mom told her g- gave her that. That that power like of not quitting and stuff. Her mom did that, but like it, like you left her on her own, dude. Like she f- fucking quit. Like you're a quitter. Like she's a quitter, man. She she's a quitter and she's a poor sport. She doesn't know how to take a loss. And then even worse than that, she can't take criticism because now anytime anyone run, wants to bring it up and tell her how good she used to be or how how crazy her loss was, all yeah. she does is take issue with it, and she takes issue with the person. Rather than taking issue with the fact that she can't, you know, get over herself. Her mother even told her, she's like, if you want to keep winning, you're going to have to change camps because your your coach is not a good coach. And she's like, nope, I'm staying with Edmund Taverdian or whatever his name is. Dude can't even punch a punching bag. You should go look up videos of him punching a punching bag, bro. It's literally fucking <laughs> comical. It's the most comical thing I've ever seen in a long time. Um, like... There's people that have offered to take her in to teach her. Even um, already, Rafael dos Anjos, he his camp just wanted to take a uh, offer to take her take her in and help her train. Um, other people have done it. Uh, Floyd Mayweather even uh, offered to help her train uh, on boxing. Like 
She, yeah, well, that just goes to show you, man. You're just that much of a sore loser, stupid fucking loser thing that you yeah, can she, uh, fucking... She was so dependent on her ego and her her identity of being this savage, ruthless, you know, bulldog of a person that just comes in, fucks up whatever's in front of her, and then goes back to her, you know, fucking... her back to the fucking cave or whatever. You know, she she identified with that, that, that savage mentality so much that when it got destroyed, she just, there was no way for her to put those pieces back together. And now I think she's kind of going through that identity crisis of, uh, she's like, I still need to be able to, re-. she wants to maintain that same level of respect that she used to have when people used to think that she could fuck up anyone. People used to be like, you know, Ronda Rousey, not only is she a great woman's fighter, but, like, she'll fuck up Floyd Mayweather. Like, she'll fuck up, you know what I'm saying? Like, you wouldn't win in a fight against her. Yeah. Whereas whereas now, and, and she, like, th- she lived off of that. She fucking breathed that in. And uh, when that went away, once she lost, once that, that feeling of invincibility went away, she, I don't think she's ever been the same person. Yeah, I uh, totally agree. But off that subject, because I hate talking about this stupid girl... Um, I was reading, I just, I always look up to see what Conor McGregor's doing. Um, but apparently Dana White said Conor McGregor was not offered, uh, the short notice fight. Um, and it says, Dana White says Conor wouldn't make, make the wait on six days notice. So there you have it. That might be a tough wait. Yeah. That might be a tough wait to make. Uh, yeah, seeing that he's been away from the game for for over a year. Yeah, almost two years. That's fucking yeah. insane, dude. Yeah, no, I uh, I support the idea of Connor coming back in September. Uh, I support it even more so if it comes uh, against Khabib in Moscow after Khabib uh, defeats Max Holloway this weekend. Um, I support. I don't even know what I support anymore. I support just watching fights and having real <laughs> genuine sports fighters that are sportsmen and sports women. Um, see what I did there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, that take Thank L's on the chin Rousey. and they come back and they come back and try to be better than ever. They take another L, they take it on the chin, and they come back. Um, yeah, I don't like sore loser bitches, so. No one does. She can stay. Uh, speaking she, of, <laughs> she can stay in, a, in that WWE with Vince McMahon and Stephanie McMahon and all those, uh, what what Conor McGregor would call roid heads. Fucking all those people over there in fantasy land. She can stay over there. Yeah, uh, stay that's there. That's right where she belongs. That's I where think. she belongs. Uh, March Madness news. Uh, Loyola Chicago finally losing the Cinderella story that they had going to Michigan. Yep, shitty ass Chicago. Just kidding. I love Chicago. <laughs> Shout out to my peoples there. And uh, and Villanova dismantling Kansas, ninety-five to seventy-nine. Um, Ooh, setting up what should be a pretty fun uh, championship game. That's tomorrow. Since or we're if talk- you're listening to this uh, and it's the day it's posted, uh, it's tonight. Uh, Michigan versus Villanova. If you didn't see it, but Notre Dame's women college basketball team won the national championship after beating... Yeah, against UConn. A, that last-minute final buzzer beater. Yeah, the they crazy. won again today against Mississippi State. On another buzzer beater to win the national championship. Oh shit! Same they chick can't be stopped. with her mamba mentality. Same chick. Same chick. I think what? she banged out. She she uh, hit a three to win it. Um, that mamba mentality, hashtag, man. Uh, hashtag mamba mentality. Went out there and she iced him. That's what she did. She she had the she had the the frozen veins. She had the ice in her veins. She went out there and iced these motherfuckers, bro. And they went home and yeah. Now I can go talk to Conrad and fucking tell him, congrats, you finally won something. But it was at women's basketball. It wasn't that football. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, baseball news. Fucking your angels. Uh, they debuted uh, Otani today on the mound. Shohei Otani. Um, their uh, their dual threat. He's uh for those who don't know, uh, 
He's a uh, pitcher slash DH for the Angels this year. Just came over from Japan, and uh, they're going to experiment and let him uh, DH uh, uh, three out of three days out of the week and pitch uh, in a six-man rotation. So he'll be in the rotation. He's got a he's got a good 100 100 mile or 100 plus mile per hour fastball. Really good slider. Uh, really good uh, split finger, or I think it, it's a sinker, sinker or splitter, <clears throat> uh, that just drops off the table. So he's got he's got good starter stuff. He had a crazy, he had something like a .98 ERA in the in his final season in Japan, and uh, he's also a really good hitter. So there he had a he had a, like a really shitty spring training, but uh, so far this week he's uh, he's not terrible. Um, He's held his own at the plate, and uh, today was his first start. But then again, baseball just started, so I mean, really can't say that much right now. He doesn't really mean that much right now, so uh, we'll see once it hits close to to after the All Star break. Then we will go ahead and uh, we then we could probably say how he's doing and see if he's going to be a bust or not. Because uh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, he's playing with Mike Trout, so uh, it. I mean, the Angels are they're looking they're looking better this year than they have uh, in the past couple years. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Hopefully they uh, keep it up. Keep up the good work. He uh, he threw six innings today. Uh, Shohei Otani threw six innings today. Six strikeouts. Uh, let's see here. One walk, uh, three hits, three earned runs. Gave up one home run. Three hits. Yes, but he did get the win. He did get the win. So he gets his first major league win today. And does he have any batting stats? Yes, he does. Uh, yeah, he's only batted. He's only played one game so far. Went one for five uh, with a single. So. I don't know. I find it. I find that crazy. Uh, I don't think he's gonna. He's long for doing the du- dual thing. Uh, like I told you before, um, I think he's uh, anybody with a hundred mile per hour fastball is going to be on a major league uh, pitching rotation, whether it's in the bullpen or it's in the starting rotation. So, depending on how well his bat does and how much value they see out of uh, out of his uh, his combined hitting plus pitching stats. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if his hitting doesn't keep up with the, how good his pitching gets, and if his pitching gets to the point where it's it's uh, he's you know burgeoning on a burgeoning on a number one starting spot, uh, he, if he's the ace of a staff, they might start trying to convince him to just uh, give up the hitting thing and, and go uh, pitch. And be, yeah, go pitch because if you're if you got if you're a young kid and you got a hundred mile power pitch or hundred mile power fastball and you got two good breaking pitches with a chance to develop a third and you can get in on a pitching career that can be very very lucrative i mean that's not you know that's not something to turn down and uh dhing two or three times a week at most uh isn't worth it if you're you know unless you're unless you're unless you're that good unless he is the babe ruth of our generation he's going to be bashing 30 home runs a year then then you know why not fuck it i just saw some great news right now Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. my Ducks just beat the Avalanche to stay alive in the playoff hunt. So we are, I believe, first oh, in the I'm wild so, card. Oh, I'm, um, oh, I'm sorry. Are you, are you talking about NHL? This is an American podcast. It's not Canadian. Oh, so we don't well, that. we don't cover that stuff. Here. You know, the thing about it is that uh, we're now third place in the Pacifics, meaning uh, we are clear. Of the wild card, but uh, yeah, I just had to go ahead and say that because you know <laughs> the ducks are just <sighs> inconsistent. So uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's really good they came back and won in overtime. So I'm not complaining here, but yeah. Well, uh, you're in <clears throat> you're in uh, in Tucson right now, right? U of A. Yeah. University of Arizona. Yep. Uh, we were talking about earlier, you guys uh, have a Heisman hopeful this year yeah. for your football team. Khalil, Khalil Tate. Tate, your quarterback. Khalil Tate. Uh, 
<clears throat> so that should be uh, that should be fun. Yeah, it should be fun. September 29th. You, uh, you like it over there? You like it over there? Is it hot yet? Uh, ain't nothing too. Ain't nothing too high. You, come on, man. Remember Kuwait when we lost water? <laughs> we had no water at Beering, and we were yeah, all scavenging yeah, yeah. out water. Hey, man. Yeah. Yeah, but still, but still. <laughs> yeah, this shit ain't hot. It's, it's hot now. We almost passed out. If we would have been out there another 30 minutes, dude, I'm pretty sure like our whole platoon would have passed out. <laughs> yeah. No. No lie. We were literally people were like. <clears throat> fucking walking on the fucking shit like dying like chalked lips chalked eyes everything just dried the fuck yeah out fucking ch- where... going in the fucking uh trash can fucking trying to savage fucking water and shit like dude you know what was the best though was getting back to the fucking chow hall Oof. and Oof. dude honestly <clears throat> the first thing i had was a thing of fruit punch I just one <laughs> thing of fruit punch and I drank this fruit punch and because of how little water we had all week and how little water like I just had that day specifically when I drank it it was so sugary my body was shaking for five minutes I was literally shit like I couldn't stop I was like I had to go sit down before I could get anything else to eat yes. or drink or anything like that yeah that was so fun dude like, those are good times <laughs> those are good times dude Fucking, fucking. Uh, but now we're now we're you're you're there at University of Arizona. I'm here in LA, going to uh, LACC here, getting college done, getting doing what we're supposed to do. Yeah, you know. Fucking, you're over there doing. You're in the Air Force ROTC, right? Yeah, doing this damn thing, trying to be an Air Force officer. Yeah. Gross. I mean, it is what it is. You, you know? disgusting thing. <laughs> I don't know. You'll thank me later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, you have fun doing that, right? Or, uh, or what? What's that it's like? It's a little tedious. It's uh, really like babysitting. Uh, kinda, yeah. It's like, and I know what I'm doing already, so it's, it's a little easier for me. Um, one <clears throat> of the perks of it is like I get to teach like younger people because I know like both spectrum of enlisted and like enlisted and working with officers and seeing bad officers and good officers and seeing knowing what flies and what doesn't fly um Mm -hmm. so it's kind of good that i get to sit and help them out and tell them like hey like this is how it is and this is what works and this is not like you being like this you're gonna have a hard time and just like mentoring them i I like mentoring people anyways so yeah, well, they're lucky to have you. I mean, they're they would be dumb not to take advantage of the fact that you've uh, you've you've walked the walk, you've talked the talk, and uh, you've you've seen what works. And um, hopefully, by listening to you and by just going through the process of, of you uh, of being there with the with the future officers of uh, of our military, that they'll that 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 will rub off. That definitely will, and they'll. Uh, hopefully be better for it so that way you know more <clears throat> more officers that uh that like you said you found it easier to work with and things like that more of those come along down the yeah line well so. and, you know you can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink and so i can i can push push stuff out there it's true so I, but i can't can do your best. i can't force them can't win them all though no so Hey, it is what it is. I, I, I'm just here to commission, man. That's all I'm here for. Get my degree in commission, and then we out. Well, my head, my head is off to you, sir. I did my five, and I'm done. <laughs> oh, I did my four, and I was done, and then I continued. Oh, I'm trying to continue. <laughs> and then I continued. It's like the, <laughs> the most motivating thing of all time. Uh, so... It, you uh you wanna you wanna pimp your shit out a, a little bit? You wanna fucking uh, you wanna Instagram at keys underscore savage and that's keys with a Z, not with an <laughs> S. And it's savage because once <laughs> because once you follow me, you're gonna see what the savagery. Some of it is recorded by <laughs> by BC right here, so um, you will see the savagery. That's right, that's right. Why the name is that? And uh, why the name is uh, <laughs> what it is, and and why should yeah right it should be keys it should be keys underscore stupid oh oh good one <laughs> keys underscore stupid 
<laughs> no, uh, please go follow my friend uh, on Instagram at keys underscore savage. You said you got a 5K coming up. What's that? About? Um, so I'm in the uh, Air Force RTC, as we have already said. I'm also in an organization, Arnold Air Society, and um, we just do community service around our community. And so every year we host a uh, Honor the Fallen 5K that we do. And um, we just do it to uh, raise money and we donate it. Uh, this year we donated do- donated to uh, a veteran uh, group. So um, we're just going out here trying to do good to the community and um, honor our fallen veterans. And we're going to run five, uh, three miles for them. Um, yeah. Uh, when is that? That is April, Sunday, April 8th. At the University of Arizona, so if there's any Arizona followers here, come go ahead and sign up. Do you know where the Do you know where the meetup meetup is? Because I'm pretty sure the campus is probably yes. It's at Old Main on the University of Arizona campus. Old Main. Um, We start there. Is that a street? No, Old Main is it's like a building. It's a really building in the middle of the in, in the middle of the main campus. It's like like the first building that was ever built I'm sure if you go campus. to U of A it's like everyone knows what that yeah, is right absolutely okay okay so if you uh, if you live near University of Arizona and you're listening to this uh, Old Main on April 8th go uh, go support uh, my friend Keyshawn Bumpers in his uh, Honor the Fallen 5k um, that's awesome dude that's uh, that's really cool that you're doing that it's really cool that you're you're doing the ROTC thing while you're in school I can't do that I already told you what my schedule's like I'm not even taking half the classes you are and i'm uh i'm not doing none of that oh yeah so. it's it's a it's a war kind of that's why i think of it like it's a war like i gotta wake up on tuesdays it's a mental war yeah that too yeah it's a mental war with yourself because you know, yeah wake up no one's making you go to class yeah absolutely that's why i like college because like if i don't want to show up to class okay hey <laughs> guess what not going to class the professor don't care i don't care either i'm just not gonna go Nope, but uh, if you do that too much, then you you know you miss out on the material and you fucking yeah, fail. your grades so start to suffer. Carefully. That's why I miss at least once a week. No. <laughs> <laughs> just for just for mental health, I take a mental health. Yeah, day. dude, always <laughs> you got to. Fuck it. Uh, so uh, when are you getting those braces off? Um, the latest is January 2019, and I I hate that you keep going back to these my grown man braces, bro. It's a grown man braces. <laughs> Uh, tell them Rod and Juvie Store Tell them make you a yeah. grill <laughs> Rod and Juvie Store Tell them make me a grill You know what I'm saying They gave me braces though <laughs> They gave you braces <laughs> Fuck Yeah man uh, January 2019 So uh, So what You're just gonna be celibate Until then or what <laughs> I guess so man <laughs> Yeah we, we about to be out here Just chilling <laughs> All right, well that's cool, man. Uh, well, shit, dude, we just did an hour and a half. We fucking killed again. It. I know. Again, we did an hour and a half earlier today, and then this news breaks, and uh, we come back and we do an hour and a half again. We're animals; we can't be stopped. That's why they call you at Key Savage. Yeah, see, finally he agrees. Not at Key Stupid. <laughs> hey, you a bum for that one. You a bum for that one. Yeah. Uh, you want to say hi to anybody uh, before we go? Shout out to my my nigga Yarb, yeah I know he gonna he gonna hear this one. I'm gonna make sure he hears this one. And uh, shout out to uh, all the boys from India three, Dirty Third, three three all day. Uh, and yeah, man, shout out to uh, say, make sure you say hi to your mom. Too, everyone, hello to mother. She's gonna be upset. How are you? You're sleeping. You're in Connecticut. You're sleeping. You're about to wake up. By now, but this is a podcast. It's going to be around forever. <laughs> <laughs> she can listen to it on her way into work. You're, you're sleepy. <laughs> she's going she to just hear, what are you talking about? I'm sleeping. Now nah, you sleeping. She's going to be like, well, that's when she's going to be like, no, he really is key stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Come on, man. got to give me a break. <laughs> no, it's cool. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So, uh, let's wrap this up and, uh, and we'll do it again, uh, next, next big UFC event. Yeah, let's do it. All right, man. 
Uh, it was good talking to you, All right, man, you, go watch Homeland. Season 7, Homeland. It's good. <laughs> catch, I got to catch up. I got to catch up. I'm still yeah, season, season 6. Uh, you still on season 5. Ugh, you gross. I know, I know. I've been slacking. There's just been so much you TV. You got a fucking boom. I've been going to the movies oh, wait, too much with fucking yard. There's some new shows I got to tell you about real fast. Okay, let's 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 fucking let's pimp them. Real the shy. Quick. It's yeah. The shy. It's a new. Sh- oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's a new show. Uh, I haven't seen it, but I've heard. Uh, I've heard very really good, good show. About it. Um, the first season just ended. Shameless. I mean, if you like fucking a fucking shit show like of a family that just is a constant shit show through every season, like go ahead and watch <laughs> that. Um, okay. Ray Donovan's a good show. Um, and I just started watching The Borehas. It's like a show about the church. Um, it's a re- pretty interesting show so far. What is it? What is it? What's the Borehas. Borehas or something like that. How do you uh, spell it? B-O-R-G-I-A-S. The Borgias. Yeah, the Borgias, I guess. The Gorgeous. I don't know. Sure. They're pretty. I'm just, I don't fucking know. What's it about? It's about... about um, <laughs> Basically, like the Pope and like the church, and yeah, that's all I'm gonna tell you. And just oh, okay. if you're gonna <laughs> no spoilers, if you're gonna here. watch, then you go ahead and watch. If not, then you don't watch. But I'm not. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Well, I mean, I'll check it out and I'll uh, I'll, I'll see they're what they're all the, on Showtime. <clears throat> what the show's all about myself. They're though. all on Showtime. So, um, nice big Showtime. Just, uh, yeah, dude, just let me know. I know you're re- very big on movies and TV shows and shit like that, so just let me know what you think. Always, dude. Uh, honestly, man, this is a lot of fun. Can't wait to do it again. All right, let's, uh, let's fuck out of here. That was my man, Keyshawn Bumpers, University of Arizona student, former United States Marine current Air Force ROTC. What is that? Like a cadet? I don't know. He's making the world a better place. That's what he's doing. What are you doing with your life? Uh, if you're doing something good with it and you're in the uh, Tucson, Arizona area, go ahead to that, uh, that 5K, that Honor the Fallen 5K on April 8th. That's right, April 8th, um, at uh, Old Main. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're anybody who's anybody, you know what that means. Um, follow Portable Driving on Instagram, at Portable Driving on Twitter, at BWD Podcasts. That's podcasts plural, with an S on the end. Um, www.boardwalldriving.com for future stuff um hopefully gonna be branching out here soon starting to get the hang of this thing it's kind of fun uh this week check out uh friday baseball recap featuring the new york yankees um that's pretty much it hope everyone uh enjoyed this thank you everyone who's uh listened so far and supported and uh, I should mention that if you want to be on the podcast, just uh, reach out. If you have something that you want to promote, you have something like this, Honor the Fallen 5K, you have uh, some shit that you want to pimp out, just uh, reach out. If you got a microphone, play Xbox Pro, play Halo. What's going on here? Uh, I think that's it. Goodbye. Okay, I'm recording. Okay, me too. And three.
two, one. No, motherfucker, at the same time. Three, two, one. Okay, that. All right, that'll work. I did. That'll work. That'll work. <laughs> Do it one, again. Two, Do it three. Again. There, that'll work. Uh, so we just line those up. And, uh,.